It's time for bookkeeping, beer, and BS. So, so Rob's got his where he does the interview gauntlet, but what we started yeah. doing in Minneapolis, because we, we're fighting the same, um, you know, just people not showing up to interviews, and you schedule them, and then you're, like, waiting for them, yeah. and then they know show, and so you're just wasting your time. So what we went to is group interviews. We just don't let them know it's a group interview. So we, we're like, interviews are Tuesdays at this time or Thursdays at that time. You know, we'll set a couple, and, and if they need like a unique spot, we'll try to make it work, but we'll set up like 10 people with the same interview time. They just don't know it. And yeah. that way, if two of them show up, it's still a win. And we basically do a, like a culture and, and like a sales presentation, right? Cause we, yeah. we need to sell them on our culture, on our company, in our process of them filling out all of our information. We already kind of know everything we need to know about them. The the interview for us to get to know them is just to make sure they're not crazy and that they're thinking on their feet when we see them. Yeah. Um, and so it's a cool way to not waste our time waiting for people. Also put them in a competitive environment where they kind of feel like they maybe need to one up somebody. Yeah. 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 Show a little something and we can, it'd be weird to do like a sales presentation in front of one person be like, let me show you all these things. Let me show you all those. But when we have a group of people, it's like, here's our core values and, and do, do all these core values. Does anybody have a conflict with these core values? Cause we're pretty gung ho about them. And so if, if this doesn't feel like a good fit for you, you know, no hard feelings, here's the door. Um, there's plenty of jobs out there for you. Here's how we pay our people. And here's Tyler's schedule this week. So Andy will actually like show our schedule and say, you know, here's what this certain individual has on the schedule for this week. Here's how they get paid. So if they do all these jobs, here's how much they make. Plus they could upsell on top of it. Um, and so here's what their paycheck would look like. Now, week one, you're going to be in training. Week two, you're in training. Week three, four, five, you're going to start getting out of training. And you're, might, you're probably not going to do as much as Tyler's doing right now, but eventually you will. And so you'll yeah. be working your way up that way. And here's how much, here's how we pay you during training. And here's a guy that just got out of training. You see what his schedule looks like. So it's a cool way to help like wrap their mind around what the job looks like from a day to day, how many jobs a guy has on his schedule, how he gets paid for him when he's leaving, when he's coming back, just all the, like how the, rather than talking about it, just throw yeah. it up on the big screen and, and go through like a legit presentation. And that seems to the, 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 appearance rate or the show up rate for interviews doesn't really change. Like how many people know show is still about the same because they just, yeah, it's just you're throwing them all on the same day. I know my general manager, I had a call with him earlier today and he was like, dude, I had two guys not show up. Mm -hmm. And like, he was texting them literally moments before the interview. Yeah, and they're like, yeah, we'll be there. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm on the way. I'm just stuck at a yeah. traffic light. I don't I like, yeah. I don't get why everybody's so full. Did you, of shit. Just did tell you me die that. since two minutes ago, like two minutes ago, you said you were two minutes away. Did you die? And yeah. it's crickets, no answers. Yeah. yeah. I, I like I had uh I had one gal do that to me. We hired her for a home cleaning job a few years ago, and she did that to me a few times. And it was like, I'm at the stoplight, I'm just around the corner, and then it'd be like 15 minutes, and I'd be like, Lady, like you couldn't have possibly been at that stoplight. Why didn't you just tell me it was true? I would have just had you meet me at the job. I sat here waiting for you for 15 minutes, and you're killing our schedule by me waiting for you thinking you're about to show up. Like you have to stop lying to me about this stuff. Yeah. This, this clearly isn't going to work. And, and, and so I, like, I basically was like, she, she did it to me during the interview, which should, like, but we were just desperate. So I freaking hired her anyway. Cause at least she showed up. <laughs> yeah. um, and then she did it to me like on day two. Um, and so then day three, she was a little bit late. And I basically was like, all right, here's the deal. Like if this happens again, this just isn't a good fit for you. Right. So we went to the first job and I, like I was cleaning with her and I was training her and she was like, Hey, I gotta you know run out to my car and grab a granola bar or whatever. I'm hungry. I didn't get a chance to eat breakfast this morning. So she runs out to her car and takes off. And I'm just like, <laughs> like, why don't like le legit. Are you 12? Like, why do you have to lie about everything? Just, just fucking tell me. Like if you're running late, just tell me that you're running late. If you're, if you're sick of the job, just tell me that you're sick of the job. Who are you? Oh, who are man. you protecting? Um, so it was just, it was like, yeah, I don't, I don't understand the propensity to lie about something. Just yeah. say, 
I'm not coming to the interview because I have a different yeah. interview or I found yeah. a different job. I just don't understand people's inability to to like take ownership and accountability. Although I appreciate it in that I'm glad we find out before we hire them instead of after we hire them. And yeah. that case I kind yeah. of found out after. But Absolutely. man, yeah, people like I that. remember many years ago, whack way back when I had a I had a window cleaning contract at the airport here in Phoenix. And uh, I hired this guy. And, and you know, one of the interview questions is, are you authorized to work in the United States? Yes. <laughs> so I took him out to the airport. I had a group of guys and we're showing up to do windows. And I'm like, man, where'd that guy go? Yeah, he's just he's just ghosting. Like, looking around. I'm like, maybe he's in the bathroom, you know, I'm sitting there working with the guys. And I'm like, dude, where'd he go? And I'm like, man, dude just disappeared. I'm like, yeah, do we need to be worried about him? Did he get yeah. kidnapped or something? So like, so like an hour later or whatever, I had to go back to my truck to get something out of my truck. And the guy was laying down in the bed of the truck. Like this. <laughs> I'm like, you're not authorized to work in the U.S., are you? He's like, can you get me out of here? Because <laughs> there's there's immigration and INS and all sorts of, you know, um, border patrol all over the yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, he would have been better off. Through. He would have been better off working and blending in. Yeah, like there's, yeah. there's nothing that makes you look more guilty than looking guilty. <laughs> in the back of the truck. <laughs> I was like, Just oh man, got that crazy look in his eye. Yeah, you could have told me the truth because then, you know, I could have not hired you and not yeah, gone through been, all this. Would have been easier for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.